In today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at adding filters to our different sounds. Or I guess more importantly, how to add a, an actual bus that has all the filters on it so we can filter our sounds through it and save a little bit of CPU. So to start off with, I'm going to go ahead and create another group here. I'll make sure I have the master selected. I'll just go ahead and add a child. And let's call this echo. And what I want to do is pass everything through that I want to echo through this one bus, this new mixer we have over here. And this way I don't have to go ahead and throw an echo on each one of these different buses because, well, it takes a little bit more CPU to do each one individually. If we can group them all together and just add one effect, it's a little more efficient. Well, it can actually be quite a bit more efficient depending on what effects you're using. But anyway, so we've got this one here. Normally I like to color code mine a bit if I have one set up that is specifically just for an effect to be added to something. So you can right click, you can just pick a color if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and make mine red. That's the color I use for all of my buses, which are just, just effects. All right, so let's go ahead, we'll set this up. First thing I wanna do is go ahead and right click. And we have two options here. We can add at the top or add at the bottom. And we get this list of different effects that we can add. And it's just gonna be the location that we're adding to it. So we'll go ahead, we'll pick echo. And since I had from the bottom, I went ahead and put it at the bottom. Uh, you can drag and drop these around. I'm horrible at clicking them and trying to get them around. So I do them up here, but I want the attenuation at the top. Great, so we've got an echo set up. Now all we have to do is go ahead and pass the sound from one of these other buses over. In order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and if we also click on the bottom where we see the add label here, we can add that way. And this time we're gonna add a receive meaning that we're gonna receive sound from any other bus. And for this one, let's go ahead and make the player, well, basically his footsteps echo. This is actually gonna do all of the sound effects that are on that player game object. If we wanted just the footsteps, we'd have to go ahead and put that off on a separate game object, make sure that was the only source being played, everything else, that's fine. This is just for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna right click. Actually, we'll just left click down by the add, and we're gonna pick a send. And that means I'm gonna send it to somewhere. And you can actually go ahead and click click the send if you right click it and pick where you want to send it to. I tend to do it over in the inspector. Now we're going to see a list of all the receivers. We're going to see the name of the bus and then the receive on it. Since I only have one set up, we only see one. Now underneath that we have the send level and that's just essentially how much sound we're going to send over to the echo. And we have the little slider here which we also note, we can see down here as well, and you can actually click it and drag it. Again, I tend to use the inspector, a little bit bigger, a little easier to click on. Now, one thing that's important to note is the order of the filters. Right now we have the attenuation, which is just the volume. Uh, we have the echo, so it's gonna apply the echo to the, the sound that's coming through this bus. And then we have the receive, which is gonna be receiving the player sound. This is actually in the wrong order. We want the echo to be applied after we receive the, the player sound. So I'm gonna go ahead, select it, come over here, take that echo, and just drag it down. And let's go ahead and game and take a look at it. Or, or guess a listen. Uh, I'm actually gonna go ahead and solo uh, the player and also the echo. And we'll go ahead and start moving around. So we see a very little bit getting passed into the actual echo. Let's go ahead and we'll turn that up. We'll go over to the send. Let's crank it up some more. And now you should be able to hear that echo. Almost sounds like there's a couple of us marching. And of course, when I let go and I stop, you still have the echo echoing a bit. And of course, with the echo, whoops, I didn't mean bypass. Uh, you do have settings to go ahead and play around with these different values for the echo. All of the different filters have those uh, sounds for you. And if you want, we can go ahead and cover all the different parameters in each of the different filters that Unity provides for you. If you're having trouble figuring out exactly what happens, let me know down below in the comments if you need help with the parameters. So let's take a look if we would have had this switched the other way where we had the receive after the echo. We go ahead. It shows that we're still getting the sound coming in, but notice we don't have the echo anymore. 
And like I said before, that's because we actually are applying the echo before we ever actually receive the sound to apply the echo to. So we'll go ahead, we'll put it back down there. And another thing to note is if the attenuation, which controls the volume for the, the bus, if we were to go ahead and put that after the echo, or sorry, after the send, and we started walking, sounds the same, but what if we turn it down? We're still hearing it, and that's because the volume controls are actually before we actually send it out. You generally want to have that before the send. Now you're not going to hear anything. So we'll go ahead, we'll turn that back up to zero. And there we go. We've just learned how to set up certain buses for specifically just to go ahead and create different audio effects with your, well, filters. Now, one filter I like to use a lot is the reverb filter. And there's a lot of presets for the reverb. Let's go ahead and we'll just add one here. SFX reverb, uh, but you can't access them here. So in order to see those default values, I really wish Unity would add them here, but in order to see those settings, if we actually come somewhere into the scene here, it doesn't matter, I'm just gonna select the campfire and we add an audio filter, we'll grab the reverb. We can actually come up here and say, I don't know, let's say I want a cave sound. So I can come down, cave, and here's all the values. Go ahead, take a screenshot or something like that. And then you can just go into, I wonder, can you actually copy this into the other component? Probably not. You'll probably, I usually do it through a screenshot, but let's just go ahead and take a look. Uh, let me grab the reverb here. And I do not see a paste. Oh, well, I knew that would be too good to be true. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's how I actually go ahead and set my reverbs up. Maybe someday we'll get that option here. But anyway, that's it for going ahead and adding filters to the audio mixer. If you have any questions, be sure to go ahead and let me know down below or in the classroom. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest or being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>